this tutorial is a refresher to your InDesign ses sessions from last year and outlines how to set up an InDesign spread and importantly how to avoid the common issues that we often see. So let's create a new document. File new document. You'll see something like this. Um, we'll leave the intent as print. Um, we'll make sure that facing pages is checked. We'll have four pages in this, this set and uh, we'll make our start page an even number. Um, what the even number does is it gets rid of those pages that you often get at the beginning and the end of documents that, that have nothing on them. If you're only, if you're only making a spread, um, starting from the even page will give you spreads. Uh, you can make other changes here. We'll go for a custom size on the page. And we'll leave the columns and gutters for the moment. Margins, we'll just drop those slightly to 10 millimeters. And then we're going to click on more options as well, and that drags up bleed and slug. We're only going to deal with bleed at the moment. We're going to give it three millimeters of bleed. That's very much a standard uh, for industry. And then we'll click OK. Now, what you should see is something like this. I'll just get rid of that palette. Um, in your pages uh, palette, which is usually docked to the side there, um, you'll see you've got your pages, you've got no start page, no finish page, you've got two nice spreads there, and they're already numbered for you so you can see where, where, you're, um, where you're on each page. And you've also got these things, the master page. Now this is something that a lot of people don't use and, and uh, that's a, a really um, big mistake. So what we'll do is we'll double click on a master page, it looks exactly the same as any other page. But what we'll do is we'll go into um, to layout, margins and columns, and we'll put some columns in. We've got our margin set, we'll put columns in, I'm going to put seven columns in. I'm going to drop my gutter to four millimetres. And you'll see it's already appeared. Double click on the right hand master page and I'm going to do the same thing again. So again, seven, seven columns. I could put a different number in there but um, at this stage I'm not going to. And there we've got some columns set up. While we're still on our master page, we're also going to make page numbers. Um, these are often called folios um, and um, you'll s Let's get this thing out of the way. This is the I don't know whether you can see that bit or not, but it's how I'm recording this screen. OK, uh, page numbers. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a text block. And in there, I'm going to go to type, insert special character, markers, current page number. And you'll see it gives you a character A. You can style that character. So we'll go overboard and make it 24 point. Um, we could make it a different typeface, uh, Monaco, OK. And that gives us our page number. We can you know, pop that outside the area if we want to. Um, and what I'll do is I'll just duplicate that. So it's just a copy and a paste. Pop it over to the other side. I'm actually going to get rid of everything because I don't want it to... Um, uh, get the numbering confused. So again we're going to type, insert special character, markers and current page number. This one I'm just going to range it right so it sort of sits in the same sort of vein as the other one and there we have, have our page numbers. The master pages are also useful for doing things like making a running head which is, um, uh, well any anything really that that is going to be repeated Across um, across a number of pages, so we'll just put a running head in there. I'm not going to style this one um, on that side. Okay, so that's the the master page. If we now click on our normal spreads, you can see the numbers are appearing automatically. And if we scroll down to the next one, there you go. And you can see that my magazine is there as the running head. Um, You'll also notice that you can't move or alter any of these things that are sat on the master page unless you go back to the master page. 
in which case you can decide to put your numbering over there or you know, at the bottom or whatever whatever else you want to do. Okay, so I'll just put that back there for now. So back to the spreads. The next thing we're going to do is create some text blocks. Okay, I'm going to do three. Now it might be worth here if I just turn the guides off. So I can just hide the guides just so you can see those three text blocks there. I'm now going to flood in some text that I've just, I've just got from the internet. I'll just copy that and I'll paste it in there. Okay, so it's pasted into the first text block. First thing to, to do is to now link these text blocks together so that this story flows. So if I select my direct selection tool, click in this little red arrow there, and click onto the next block, you'll see it links. There's still some more to come, we'll link it across here. Okay, and there we are, we've got three linked text blocks. If I move this text block, you'll see the other two start to move around and make that story, keep that story consistent. Next thing, um, is uh, paragraph styles and again this sometimes seems like a bit of a, a chore when you're only working on um, uh, two spreads but you've got to get into this habit because when you get out in industry paragraph styles are uh, very much a um, mainstay of magazine production okay character styles type type palette go to character styles you'll see we've got um, Sorry, paragraph styles. You'll see we've got we've got nothing there. We've got a basic paragraph. Click on the create new paragraph, and we'll go for a new paragraph style. Basic character format. You can change lots of things here. We're going to call this style body, and we'll leave it on minion pro for the moment. Oh no, we won't. That's what we'll do. We'll select something a little more challenging. Let's go for brush script. And we'll drop the type size to 10. Uh, where you get the brackets there, that means it's a, um, an automatic default setting. That's something we don't really want to see. I'm going to chuck the lead in up to 13.5. That's the line feed. I'm going to leave everything else normal. Um, usually with paragraphs, where you don't have a, a line between a paragraph or a space between a paragraph, you'll indent it. So if you go to indents and spacing and just put a first line indent of three millimeters and then click OK. Now we'll select all our text, so Command A, we'll select everything, we'll just click on body and it's changed everything for us to a wonderful brush script. Just go in there a bit, you can see uh, what a good choice that was. One of the problems that we have got though is that you don't indent your first paragraph. That really isn't a, um, a thing to do. So what we'll do is we'll create another paragraph style. We're going to base it on body. So everything's exactly the same, except on the indents. I'm going to drop that down to zero. Okay. Now what we'll do is we'll click in our first paragraph. And we'll click on, actually I didn't rename that one, did I? But there we go, we'll do that one now. You can keep coming back into these paragraph styles and changing them. That's the, that's the, the beauty of them, really. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm sure you'll agree that um, brush script is, probably isn't the right typeface to go. So what, what, what we'll do is we'll, we'll, we'll change that now. So go to paragraph formats. Brush script. I'm going to leave everything else the same. Um, I'm going to choose something a bit more uh, appropriate. So I'll go for a, a Adobe Garamond and click OK. And you see it changes everything. Um, strangely, what it hasn't. Oh, yes, it has. Yeah, I thought it hadn't changed the first paragraph, but it has. So we've still not got an indent on that first paragraph. Um, 
Right, you can create obviously as many of these paragraphs as uh, paragraph styles as you want. So, you know, stand first, captions, box outs, pull quotes, page numbers, all those sorts of things should be styled through paragraph styles. Headlines tend to be uh, through character styles, which we'll we'll come on to in another tutorial. So that's basically how you're setting up your document. I'll pop the, great, the, the guidelines back on. So I'll just show the guides and then you can see how it sits in. Just the last thing I would want to point out at this stage is make sure that you're using your grid in the right way. So you can see these text blocks fill two columns but they don't fill a gutter. So where we see things like that will be highly critical. Okay. So, to recap, you should be able to set up a document that shows facing pages that has your bleed area in. This is the red line on the outside. Um, you should be able to create columns on your page through your masters, so through your A master there, and put in things like uh, running heads and so on and so forth. You should be able to create and link text blocks um, and also create and edit paragraph styles. That's it for now. The next one I'm going to take you right to the other end and that's how we pre-flight and package it in InDesign file.